So I think that kind of a fun way of looking at this idea of interaction via text is to take this Jack and Jill story that I just showed you and customize it. That is, what I'd like to have it do is before the actual story starts, I'd like to have Mother Goose come out and ask me my name. And I can type in my name, Ben, and then instead of telling the story about Jack and Jill, she can tell the story about Ben and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water and Ben fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Right? We want to customize that and then maybe later on we'll add some new things. Uh, I don't want to go up the hill for a, a, a pail of water. I might want to go up the hill for a pail of uh, coffee or something like that. Right? So we want to add in some, some ability to ask the user some questions and use their answers to those questions inside of our story. So let's look at what we would do that, right? But basically, before my story starts here, as my story starts, uh, I want to, to have Mother Goose come out onto the stage and take her place. But then before she starts the story of Jack and Jill, I want her to ask me some questions, OK? And so the question is, well, how do I do that? What is it that we need to do? Well, I mean, you know, the first thought might be that we could go back to the looks tab and, you know, you look down here and you say, well, I mean, I have this say block, so I could have Mother Goose say, what is your name for two seconds. But the problem with that is there's no way that I'm actually gathering an answer to that. I mean, she's just going to say, what is your name? And then after two seconds, it's going to go away and we're going to move on to the story of Jack and Jill. So that's not what we want. We need a mechanism where we can ask questions and wait for a user to give me a response, regardless of how long that response takes. And Scratch does have that feature. It's on the sensing menu. And so we haven't really looked at this light blue sensing menu. And there's a number of things in this sensing menu that at the moment may be sort of overwhelming. Let's not worry about all of them right now. I'm worried only about these two blocks right here toward the general uh, top of the, the sensing menu. And in particular, we're interested in this block right here, ask what is your name. And in fact, notice that the, 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 the block comes by default with the with the question, what is your name? And so when I run this right now, I mean, if I just stop right now and run this program, right, Mother Goose comes out and asks me, what's my name? Notice it's in a blue speech box rather than the gray speech boxes of just saying something. And so that's a signal for you as you're using this that, that Scratch is waiting for an answer. And then down here at the bottom, there's a text field where I can put in my answer. And again, Scratch will accept text. It will accept numbers uh, and then interpret it appropriately. So I'm going to say, what is your name? And I say, Ben. And I can hit the Enter key or I can hit the, the submit button here. And then at, at this point, my program happened to end. That's all there is to this, right? Well, I want to now add some, you know, take that and use that answer. So here's the thing. I'm going to want to take that answer and I'm going to want to use it multiple times in my story, right? I'm going to want to eventually be able to say the story of Ben and Jill or the story of Mark and Jill or the story of Amy and Jill, right? Whatever answer they gave me here, I want to be able to use it here instead of Jack and here instead of Jack and here instead of Jack. So there's three places that the word, the name Jack appears. And I don't want to, I want to be able to access this. So I want to be able to remember whatever answer they gave me. Well, we have to go to another menu for this. That now introduces us to the idea of data. Data is any information that is being provided to us during the execution of the program that may affect how that program runs. In this particular case, we're getting in a piece of data that indicates the name of the user. And so I need to be able to store that name in uh, that in that answer in a variable that's going to store that name. You'll notice there's another one here for making a list. We'll look at that in module five. But right now, we just want to be able to make a variable. So I'll click on this button. And it now gives me a pop-up that says, create a variable. And what do you want to call it? Well, uh, this is going to be the name that they give me. So I think name is just a good name for that variable. It asks whether I want all sprites to know about this variable or just this sprite. For the most part in Scratch, you're, you're, you actually are interested in all sprites knowing about it. There are a few cases where it's going to be uh, local just to the sprite rather than global to all sprites. But in general, most of the variables that I've worked with in Scratch are global, at least to get started. So let's make this variable name. 
And you'll see that now, as soon as I do that, a couple of things happen. First of all, we get options here that weren't here a minute ago. Um, basically, if you look at what these variables or what these blocks of code do, it allows us to set the variable name that we just created to a particular value. It allows us to change it by a, a mathematical value. And it allows us to show and hide it. Uh, over here on the screen, you'll see by default, when, I cr when you make a variable in Scratch, it places a representation of that variable on the screen. And that's really helpful for debugging, for understanding what's going on. And so right now, I can see that there's a variable called name that, that just has the value of 0 in it, because we haven't done anything with it. Well, here's how I want to use that variable. The idea is that when I ask the, the, my program, I ask my user, what is your name, I want to take the answer that they gave me, and I want to store it in this variable called name. And so I need to use the set block. I want to set name to whatever answer they gave me in the question block. And so I'll go back to sensing, and I'll take this answer peg. We haven't really talked much about pegs yet. Uh, these uh, are, notice, not a normal block, right? It doesn't have notches. It doesn't have tabs. It can't be put uh, in line as code. Instead, this is a, a, a action. It's an operation in Scratch that produces a value. And in this case, it just looks up, well, what's stored over here in, uh, or what's stored in the answer that they just gave me. And so I say, I want you to take that answer, and I want you to set name to whatever they just gave me. And so now when I run this, it says, hey, what's your name? And I say, well, my name is Ben. And then what this did was it set the name variable to equal Ben. And now in future code, I can come and use the value of that variable so that instead of saying the story of Jack and Jill, I'll say the story of Ben and Jill. And we'll look at that in another video. In summary, in this lesson, we actually introduced two very important related but separate issues. We first went to the light blue menu and looked at the ask block and the answer peg that corresponds to input that the user provides when they encounter the ask block. And second, independent of that, we went to the uh, kind of dark orangish menu where we looked at data. And we looked at the idea of variables. Again, a variable being something that stores information provided by a user during execution, or data that's calculated or somehow generated during the execution of a program. And with those two features, we now open ourselves up to a brand new set of possibilities. And so in the next lessons, we'll look at how we can use these ideas to improve our stories.